Welcome and thank you for watching this video. In it, we will demonstrate how to complete a TDM checklist and discuss the recently adopted CCAG TDM policy and new CCAGTDM.org website. This video will cover four topics relevant to the CCAG TDM policy. The first topic is an overview of the CCAG Transportation Demand Management website. The second topic is the CCAG TDM checklist. Within this topic, we will describe the process for selecting, filling out, and submitting the appropriate checklist. We will provide two examples. The third topic will summarize the checklist review and implementation process. Lastly, we will go over essential resources that may be of use to you. Here we provide an overview of the website, ccagtdm.org. But first, some quick background. The CCAG Transportation Demand Management website, TDM for short, is a dedicated online resource for the CCAG TDM policy, which was recently updated by CCAG board approval in September 2021 and became effective on January 1, 2022. The TDM policy also goes by another official title, Land Use Impact Analysis Program, which is one chapter of the more comprehensive congestion management program also overseen by CCAG. The purpose of the TDM policy is to facilitate the movement of people on the congestion management network rather than simply vehicles. Back to the website itself. It has five top-level pages. The home page has a brief summary of the CCAG TDM program and a beautiful image of San Mateo County. The About page has more details on the purpose of the CCAG TDM policy and features crucial policy documents, such as the Policy Approach Document, as well as the Implementation Guide. And for those who wish to delve further, the Policy Approach Document also includes an explanation of the underlying scoring methodology applied in the checklist. The checklist page has links for downloading the required TDM policy checklists, as well as instructions regarding the checklist review process. This will be covered in more detail in just a little bit. The measures page provides a visual glossary of all the TDM measures within the TDM policy and links to dedicated pages with more information about each TDM measure. TDM measures are designed to encourage ride sharing to the site and include things like providing secure bike parking, subsidized transit passes, shuttles to transit, and pedestrian oriented uses on the ground floor. The measures page can also be reached when completing the checklist itself. To do so, simply click on the title of a measure within the checklist. Each one is hyperlinked back to this glossary. Last but not least, the FAQ page provides a list of pertinent questions that have been asked during the course of developing and now implementing the TDM policy. A core focus of this video is to demonstrate filling out the TDM checklists so that viewers become familiar with the checklist content, layout, and general procedure. We'll demonstrate filling out two different checklists for two different land uses. To download a TDM checklist in PDF format, visit the checklist page of ccagtdm.org. At the top of the page, there are eight checklists organized by land use and category in the left-hand column and project size in terms of estimated ADT, or average daily trips, and correlated square footage employee count, or units, in the right-hand column. Before we can fill out a TDM checklist, we need to determine the correct checklist to download. You'll need to know the estimated average daily traffic, or ADT, generated by the development and the development's land use. The minimum ADT threshold requiring completion of a CCAG TDM checklist is 100 ADT. If your project is estimated to generate 100 to 499 ADT, then it is classified as a small project. If it is estimated to generate 500 or more ADT, then it is considered a large project. Projects with less than 100 ADT are completely exempt. ADT is often documented in the form of a traffic impact analysis report. This may not always be the case, however. In such instances where a traffic impact analysis report is not readily available, there are multiple verified methods to calculate ADT. Examples include the Institute of Transportation Engineers Trip Generation Manual, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency Smart Growth Mixed Use Trip Generation Tool, and the San Diego Association of Governments Trip Generation for Smart Growth. Again, these are just some examples. There are others. The TDM policy permits user choice to apply trip calculation methodology, but perhaps most importantly, whichever method is chosen, the chosen methodology and the actual project ADT calculations must be documented. You can read more about ADT in the TDM policy implementation guide, which is featured in the About section of the CCAG TDM website. For projects with a mix of land uses on the site, you must select the checklist with the land use type that generates the majority of ADT. 
So if your traffic analysis indicates most traffic will be generated by an office use and will exceed 500 ADT, then select large non-residential for office industrial and institutional. We're going to demonstrate filling out a checklist for a large residential project first, and then a large non-residential for office industrial and institutional mixed use project second. To download the PDF checklist, just click the link in the corresponding row within the farthest right-hand column. Depending on your web browser settings, this may download the PDF file to your downloads folder, or it may open directly in your browser. If at any point you wish to save the PDF checklist file, there are several options. One is to click File in the upper left-hand corner, followed by Save As. You'll then enter your preferred file name and location for saving. Another is to select File, then Print, and then select PDF Format, again with a prompt for your preferred file name and location. Additionally, you may also print the checklist directly to paper and complete it manually. This is the TDM checklist for a large residential project. This checklist's form is broken down into six sections labeled A through F. It's a good idea to double check the checklist type at the top of the page to make sure you've got the correct checklist for your land use and project size. In section A, you'll enter the project contact information and some identifying information about the project. You'll also add the date that this checklist was filled out. The section should look something like this once you've completed it. In Section B, you'll determine which project proximity categories your project falls into. This is a required input, since it determines the trip reduction target the project will need to meet. The respective trip reduction target percentages are based on the proximity of the project to high-quality transit, as defined by the Metropolitan Transportation Commission, aka MTC. In general, high-quality transit is a bus stop or train station that has 15-minute service frequency on weekdays during peak hours of 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. In the upper right-hand corner of this section, there is a link to read more about the definition of high-quality transit. Once you know what the project's reduction target is from Section B, it's time to review Section C, Required Measures. As the section title indicates, you must select all of the required measures that apply based on the project's proximity to transit, which was determined in Section B. A good example of how this works is the third listed measure, M4, which has two checkboxes. This measure has a different value depending on how close the project is to high-quality transit. Other TDM checklists feature similar differentiators based on trip reduction target category, so keep this in mind regardless of which checklist you use. After selecting each of the required measures that apply to this project, you'll sum all of the values that were checked and enter the total at the bottom of the section in row 7. The next section of the checklist is Section D, Additional Recommended Measures. This is where you get to make a lot of decisions. You need to select enough additional measures so that the total trip reduction percentage meets or exceeds the trip reduction target category previously marked in Section B. Note that in some circumstances, the minimum trip reduction target is satisfied with just the required measures from Section C. But usually, you'll need to select one or more of the measures from the Additional Recommended Measures section. A few measures have more complex options, such as Measure M19. Here, you can choose all from four types of land dedication or transit capital improvement options. Choose as many of these as you'd like to implement. Once you have finished selecting the necessary additional measures, sum the values that were checked in this section and enter the total in the last box at the bottom of this section. Remember, the totals from your selected required measures and additional measures must meet or exceed the trip reduction target value that you determined on the previous page. Section E is where we check to make sure that the totals from the required measures and additional measures sections meet or exceed the trip reduction target value. Enter the total from Section C, Line 7, and the total from Section D, Line 22. The bold swooping arrow towards the bottom of this section is to remind you that the summed value from Section C and D must meet or exceed the selected trip reduction target category from Section B. If this is the case, then the project has essentially met the necessary minimum trip reduction target value. If this is not the case, you must select more measures from the additional measures section until the trip reduction target has been met. If you're filling out the checklist online, be sure to save it so that all the information you've entered gets preserved. To save, you can click File in the upper left-hand corner, followed by Save As. Alternately, you can select File, then Print, and select PDF Format. Let's go back to the CCAG TDM website so we can walk through filling out another form. This is the TDM checklist for a large non-residential mixed-use project. 
As explained earlier in this video, projects that have a mix of land uses on the site must select the checklist corresponding with the land use that generates the greatest share of the total project ADT. So in this example, we presume a mix of land uses at the project site, with each land use generating a portion of at least 500 total ADT at the site. This 500 ADT threshold constitutes a large project. More specifically, in this example, we presume the greatest share of the calculated 1200 ADT will be generated by an office, industrial, or institutional land use on site. These land uses are specific to the non-residential for office, industrial, and institutional project type. Therefore, in this case, we have selected this particular large non-residential checklist to represent this sample mixed-use project. The same logic applies to other mixed-use projects of different sizes and land uses. This checklist's form is broken down into six sections labeled A through F. In section A, you'll enter the project contact information and some identifying information about the project, as well as the date the checklist was filled out. The section should look something like this once you've completed it. In section B, you'll determine which project proximity categories your project falls into. This is required since it determines the trip reduction target the project will need to meet. The respective trip reduction target percentages are based on the proximity of the project to high quality transit. In the upper right hand corner of this section, there is a link to read more about the definition of high quality transit. Once you know what the project's reduction target is from section B, it's time to review section C, required measures. As the section title indicates, you must select all of the required measures that apply based on the project's proximity to transit, which was determined in the previous section B. After selecting each of the required measures that apply to this project, you sum all of the values that were checked and enter the total at the bottom of the section in row 10. The next section of the checklist is section D, additional recommended measures. Here you'll need to select enough additional measures so that the total trip reduction percentage meets or exceeds the trip reduction target category previously marked in section B. Note that in some circumstances, the minimum trip reduction target is satisfied with just the required measures from section C but usually you'll need to select one or more of the measures from the additional recommended measures section. In this case, no additional measures need to be selected since the project meets the minimum requirement with only the required measures. Once you have finished selecting any necessary additional measures, in this case, we've selected none, sum the values that were checked in this section and enter the total in the last box at the bottom of this section. Remember, the totals from your selected required measures and additional measures must meet or exceed the trip reduction target value that you determined on the previous page. Section E is where we check to make sure that the totals from the required measures and additional measures sections meet or exceed the trip reduction target value. Enter the total from section C, line 10, and the total from section D, line 24. The bold swooping arrow towards the bottom of this section is to remind you that the summed value from section C and D must meet or exceed the selected trip reduction target category from section B. If this is the case, then the project has met the necessary minimum trip reduction target value. If it is not the case, you must select more measures from the additional measures section until the trip reduction target has been met. If you're filling out your checklist online, at this point make sure to save your document so you preserve all the data you've entered. Now that you've seen two example TDM checklists, you may be wondering, what happens next? The answer is that local jurisdictions subject to the CCAG TDM policy must incorporate the checklist as part of their local development review process. Therefore, you must file the checklist with your local jurisdiction planning department alongside any other locally required development review application materials relevant to your proposed development project. The local planning department will review the checklist and notify CCAG of the submission for record keeping and policy performance measurement purposes. Once approved by the local planning department, planning commission, or council, whichever applies, the TDM measures that have been selected as part of the approved checklist become conditions of approval for the development. This means implementation of the TDM measures are contractually binding. Further details and guidance regarding the implementation process are also provided in the implementation guide, which is available to download from the About page on the CCAG TDM website. We conclude this video by encouraging you to share this information with colleagues and interested members of the public. For questions or support regarding the CCAG TDM policy, including preparing the relevant checklist, please email support at ccagtdm.org. This, along with other relevant contact information, is also available on the website. Thank you for watching.